Hey, thanks for stopping by. What we've got here is an Ingram mantle clock. I purchased this from a local buy and sell group for a decent price, but it did come with the wrong key. So it's supposed to be a double-ended key. One end goes to the top there to adjust the beat rate, and the other end is used to wind the, the chime side of the clock and the time side of the clock. So I'll have to see if I can find a, a new one of those. The first thing I'm going to do here is just see how the clock runs uh, before I start messing with it. Uh, it's ticking, so that's good news, and looks like it's chiming. Uh, so it looks like it chimes once on the 30 minute mark, and it should chime, yeah, the number of times for the hour. So that sounded a little like metal on metal, so I'll have to look at that and see what's going on. So before I can get the movement out, I got to take the dial and the hands off and then I'll be able to flip the case over and work on getting movement out and we can see what we're working with. So this movement should be held in by four screws, um, but I noticed it was missing a screw there at the top left. Um, so I'll have to find another screw and get that secured properly once I get everything put back together. So you can see here that the movement's really been over oiled. These hammers here are supposed to have leather tips inserted. One looks like maybe a leather shoelace was used and the other one was just missing a leather tip. So that's why the, the chiming sounded like metal on metal. So here I'm just measuring the, the arbors so I can find the correct double-ended key. Um, the bottom ones are about 3.6 millimeters and the top one uh, was about 2 millimeters. So I'll look online and see if I can find the right key. Before I start taking the movement apart, uh, I've got to let down the main springs. Uh, I like to use a couple zip ties and this holds the springs in place. And then I use a letdown tool to slowly unwind the springs and the zip ties hold the springs in place. So this is a very important step uh, you need to do to uh, to make sure that you don't hurt yourself or damage the clock in any way. So this is the first time I've seen a click spring like this one. I haven't worked on a lot of clocks yet, so I'm not too surprised, but um, on the other clocks I've worked on, I could just simply move the click spring out of the way. On this one, I decided to use some wire to pull it back so it was out of the way. Um, maybe there's a better way to do it, but that's what I decided to do there.
it looks like the majority of the oil is coming from these mainsprings so they've uh, definitely been over oiled and it's making things pretty messy just a few minutes in and I've already got to change gloves alright so now I can go ahead and start taking the rest of the movement apart and uh, I'll look everything over and see if there's any problems or anything that's damaged Alright, so now I got the whole movement taken apart and uh, now I can start getting everything cleaned. What I'm using here is just hot soapy water and uh, this helps get the majority of the oil and dirt off and then I'll go over everything with a pick and scrape off any hardened areas of of dirt and then I'll finish things off with uh, mineral spirits
As I'm cleaning, I'm noticing various signs that this clock's been worked on before. If you look close around the pivot hole, there's little divots, and that looks to me like a hole closing punch was used. I've never used one of those tools before, but uh, from what I understand, what that tool does is um, displace the metal a little bit and kind of close in the hole. So if the hole starts to show a little bit of wear, um, one method is to use a hole closing punch and that just decreases the hole diameter a little bit. It also looks like some solder was used to make some different repairs. Now I'm just going to use some peg wood just to clean out all the pivot holes. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other plate and I'll just do the same process. It looks like there's a little bit of a bend there in the middle of the plate. So I'm going to have to look into that and see what's going on there.
So the last thing I'm going to use is uh, mineral spirits and just clean off any last bits of uh, dirt and oil. What I'm using in the ultrasonic cleaner is just water and a little bit of soap. So the rubber ducky isn't a required step to the cleaning process, but uh, from what I understand, it's supposed to make bath time so much fun. So I'm going to give it a try here and uh, see if it works out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get these hammers cleaned up. Uh, first I'm going to pick out this old material. Um, this one looks like maybe a, a leather shoelace was put in there. That's at least what it looks like to me. Um, and this other hammer um, is missing its leather insert. and uh, I think that green crud is some leftover adhesive or, or glue of some sort.
So now it's time to get these main springs cleaned and I'm going to go ahead and use this mainspring winder that I made. Uh, you always want to make sure you wear a face shield and a nice glove to protect yourself. Here shortly you'll see why wearing these is really important. First thing I gotta do here is get these zip ties off the spring. So I'm gonna wind the spring up just a little bit. And that will release the tension off those zip ties and then I can get those cut off. And then uh, after that, then I can just simply unwind the spring. Now that the main spring is fully unwound, uh, the next step is to try to get the main wheel disconnected from the main spring. The arbor on the main spring has a hook on the side of it that hooks into a hole on the innermost coil of the main spring. If you look close, you can kind of see the hook on the side of the arbor and it's moving within the hole on the main spring. So the trick is to try to get that hook out of that hole and sometimes that can take quite a bit of fiddling um, but in this case I was able to get it um, pretty quickly. So now we can go ahead and get this spring cleaned and I'm gonna go ahead and use WD-40 just as a cleaning solution um, to get off all the the dirt and the hardened grease off the main spring. Um, and then once once the main spring is clean, um, I'll wipe away all the WD-40 so there's no more uh, WD-40 uh, remaining. And then I'll use uh, a special main spring lubricant to finish things off. Sometimes some of these, these areas where there's some hardened grease or dirt, um, you have to scrub pretty hard to get it off. Um, so you just keep at it until it's all removed and and then just wipe it away all right so now that the spring is clean I'm just going over everything with the rag and, and wiping away all the WD-40 um, I went over the whole spring maybe three or four times until there was no more uh, residue on the rag and uh, I think it turned out pretty good here Next thing is just to apply some uh, mainspring lubricant. Um, just put a little bit on the rag there and um, wipe on a, a thin film over the whole spring. So before I install the mainspring back onto the main wheel, I've got to get this uh, main wheel clean. So I'll go ahead and give it a little cleaning treatment here and then uh, then I can attach the spring back to the arbor. Next up here is to wind the main spring back up, so I'll go ahead and get it back into the main spring winder. Uh, wind that up so it's tight. Install a couple zip ties to hold the spring in place and um, move on to the next main spring. Here I'm just uh, re-engaging the click spring with the click. 
And uh, when you wind a clock and you hear that clicking noise, it comes from this mechanism here. So there's one more main spring to, to clean and lubricate. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same process for this one. And that's why you always want to wear a nice glove when you're dealing with these mainsprings. What happened in this scenario is there's a hook on the mainspring winder that's hooked into the loop at the end of the mainspring and that hook slipped out of that loop and then all the force that was built up into that spring suddenly released and uh, when that happens it could cause a lot of damage um, to your hand, the spring could um, break apart and fracture and pieces could go flying. So uh, in this scenario, I, I was lucky and, and uh, didn't get hurt at all. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and look at the bend in the center of this plate. And that bend is coming from the location where the center arbor is located. So I'm going to install just the center arbor and see how much end shake there is. And there's supposed to be a little bit of end shake from what I understand. And there's just slightly a little bit of end shake. If I were to bend that plate back to make it look right, I don't think this arbor would spin freely. I think it would bind up. So I think that bend is supposed to be there, but I could be wrong. Next thing to look at is installing new leather tips in these hammers. And uh, the leather cord that I have is just a little bit too big. So I'm going to have to shave those down a little bit uh, and see if I can get those to push in. And is it going to fit? Yep, it fits now. And uh, just go ahead and use a little bit of super glue, and this will hold the, the leather tip in place. I think the hammers look pretty good now and here in a little bit we'll see how they sound. 
now I can finally work on getting the movement reassembled and hopefully I can get everything put back correctly. So I noticed I installed this lever on the wrong side of this pivot and a good thing I caught this now because it would have been a pain to have to take everything back apart. And then I'm going to rotate the warning pin about a halfway turn away from the locking lever. And the reason is that the warning wheel is spinning very fast so it needs some lead distance to make sure the locking lever is down before the warning pin gets to it. So I want to show how I calculated the beats per minute that the clock should tick at. And I did this by counting the teeth and the pinions from the escape wheel down to the center wheel. And you can see the path there I highlighted in red. And uh, using a simple calculation, um, I calculated the beats per minute for this clock should be at 187.2. So if I can get the clock to tick at 187.2 beats per minute, then the, theoretically the clock should tick um, just right. It shouldn't run too fast or too slow. Um, but in a, a real world scenario, there's other variables that affect the beat rate, but uh, having that target uh, BPM is a good place to start. Next is the tedious process of trying to align all the pivots into their pivot holes and um, this requires a lot of patience and it's important not to, to force anything at this stage because you can end up bending something um, or breaking something so uh, I just take my time and work my way through and and uh, get everything back into place So now I'm just going to play around with the movement a little bit here and just make sure that everything's spinning freely and nothing's binding up. So now I'm going to wind up these main springs a little bit so I can loosen up the zip ties and get those cut off. I'm just going to do a quick test of the chime side of the movement just to make sure that uh, I get everything put back together correctly and things are moving the way they should. It looks like I put everything back together correctly, at least on this side of the movement. So now I'm going to test out the time side of the movement 
just to make sure that I put everything back together correctly. And it's ticking, so looks like we're all good there. Now that everything's oiled, I put the movement back into the case just to see how it's ticking and how the chimes sound. And something doesn't seem right with that. I think the leather tips are a little too soft. So I did some reading and found that people are suggesting to add a little glue to the leather tips. And this will harden them up just a little bit and we'll see how that sounds. I think that did the trick. Now that I got all the dust blown off, I'm going to go over everything with a brush and some water and uh, wipe away all the dirt and then I'll go over the whole case with some oil and uh, see if I can get the case looking a lot better than what it does now. This oil is really working wonders on this case. It's making the grain pop, the colors are vibrant again. Um, it's really bringing the case back to life.
So I'm just going to gently clean the dial. There's a very high risk at this point of being too aggressive and scrubbing the ink away. And at that point, um, the dial's kind of ruined. Hey look, the glass is winking and smiling at me. I think it's happy that it's finally clean. So I was able to find the right key based on the measurements I took earlier and uh, let's see how it works and it's winding so it fits so that's good and then the other end is a little bit smaller and that goes into the hole at the top um, you turn it to the left and the clock beats slower you turn it to the right and the clock beats faster So I adjusted the beat rate until I could get it as close as I could to the theoretical beat rate. And so I got it to 187.18 beats per minute. And uh, I let it run for a long time at that rate and it's keeping good time. Thanks for watching and take care.